Welcome to the very first episode of Finders Keepers. Let me introduce the two contestants we have for you. We have Heather Hooks from Hooked on Pickin. Take a bow, Heather. Isn't she wonderful? <laughs> Introduction. She's the greatest wife on earth. Absolutely. Greatest wife on earth. She is the mother of three, and speaking of three, the oldest, James. How are you, James? I'm good. Very good. Take a bow, James. James is the novice picker. He's the son of a preacher and the best son I have ever had. So let's go over the rules of finders, keepers, losers, weepers. Finders, keepers, rule number one. Each contestant will have $20 to find their treasures. $20, sir. Thank you, kind sir. $20, ma'am. Woohoo, I'm rich. All right. <laughs> Rule number two, each will have two hours to go into the Goodwill Outlet. This is where we'll be shopping today. They're going to go into the Goodwill Outlet. They are looking for one very odd thing, which hopefully they can find an odd thing at the Goodwill Outlet, and three items that they're going to sell online and see what profits that they can come up with. Rule number three, no devices can be used in the process of searching for those items. They can only rely on their skill and instinct as a picker to find those treasures. Who do you think is going to win this? Me. Also her. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to find out. Rule number four, what you find, you keep. The profits, that is. You get to keep whatever the profits sell for. Whatever the item sells for, you get to keep. Uh, you get to keep what all the items sell for. So the three items that she finds, the three items that he finds, whatever the profits are, that is the jackpot, if you will. Um, finders, keepers, losers. What is it? Weep. Weepers. Weepers. Very good. All right, let's talk to James and see how what strategy that he's going to use to win the Finders, Keepers episode. How are you going to do it, James? Well, I definitely don't know as much as my mom, so I'm probably going to look for things that are uh, heavy, technological, and look expensive. Very good. Well, he's, he's got a plan, folks. Three things. We're going to find out what Heather's plan is in just a few moments. All right, Heather's pretty much the expert on this episode here. We're going to find out what her strategy is. Heather, tell us what's your strategy going to be to win Finders Keepers. Well, uh, we're going to the Goodwill Outlet, so I'm definitely going to look for some things that are vintage in nature oh, okay. because, you know, people clean out their houses, spring cleaning. I'm probably going to look for, um, obviously, something that's super unique, maybe for, like, the eBay seller. Um, and then anything that just catches my eye. I guess I've done this reselling for so long that I can kind of Hopefully, spot the good deals. All right. Heather's got over 10 years of experience in picking. Uh, James has a couple hours of experience in picking. And we're going to find out how you can do, whether you're the expert or novice, how can you win this game of finders, keepers, losers, weepers? All right, we just arrived at the Goodwill Outlet, so we're getting ready to go in. Good luck, sir. You'll need it. I will.
So what do you got here, buddy? Well, a bunch of golf clubs. A lot. Um, I found this. It looks in pretty good condition, and the cord's, oh, the cord's pretty good, too, which is surprising. What is it? Uh, it's a VHF tape player. I think... Well, I thought it could do CDs. Yeah, actually, it can do CDs. So it's a CD and VHS player, which is pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a printer, some Nerf stuff, and... So, I think I'm doing pretty good. Oh yeah, and I found these. They're really heavy. So hopefully they're good. And then I just, I just don't know what these are. I. James, what do you think your chances are of winning Finders Keepers? Well, I think they're pretty good. Uh, I found a lot of weird things, but I, I think they'll do really well. Uh, a lot of stainless steel, stuff like that. I did find, uh, which was very strange to me, a John Madden football 1990s Atari game. And it was strange to me just because why was it in the Goodwill? Uh, these can sell for a lot because, you know, it's Atari. It's one of the first game systems. So I'm just glad I found it. Good deal. We'll see how well you do. All right, Heather, you hooked on Picking Master. How do you think you're going to do on Finders Keepers here? Well, I think I did pretty good, although I was kind of sneaking peeks into James's cart, and I'm a little bit nervous, and he's learned a lot, and so I hope that I beat him just simply because I'm the most experienced. Um, I also found some fun things. There were some really weird things, really odd things, some fun things. Um, I found this. Okay, I know it's 2019, and this says 2014, but it is a name that stash calendar. So you just flip through it right here. This, it, These are the Jimi Hendrix stashes. This is the Danny Glover stash. This is the, I don't know, Crazy Angel Wing stash. Groucho Marx stash, and they've even got like, I've seen in here, Albert Einstein, and so I just thought this would be really fun to just kind of peruse through and stick on my desk, and when I need a laugh, look at the weird mustaches. All right, Heather and James both will bring one item at a time to the table, and we're gonna find out, as we've done some research throughout the rest of this day, uh, what, uh, what this item is going to sell for. Who is the best picker? Who found the best treasure in Finders Keepers Losers Weepers? Okay, round one is the odd round. What is the odd thing that James found at the Goodwill Outlet? James, tell us, what's the odd thing that you found there? Well, I found a Madden football game for the Atari, which uh, is odd to me because why would it be at the Goodwill Outlet? This could sell for a lot, seeing that it's an Atari game. All right, we'll see if James's picking skills and instincts are correct. We did some investigation uh, this afternoon and discovered exactly what this game is. It is not an Atari game. It is a Sega Genesis game. I don't know if you uh, realize that. It says oh, it no. right on the cartridge. Sega Genesis from 1990. So not as old as James thinks it is, but 1990 probably feels like a long time away from you but not for a lot of the viewers out there. This Sega Genesis game is brings back memories for a lot of folks, but it is absolutely worthless. It is worth absolutely nothing. You could use it potentially as a coaster, but nothing more than that. It doesn't even make a good paperweight because it is so light. James, you spent 20 cents on this item, this worthless item. You were in the hole, <laughs> negative 20 cents for round one. Let's find out what Heather was able to find as her odd item of the day. 
All right, we're still on round one for the odd thing that people can find down at the Goodwill Outlet. And let's see what odd thing that Heather found at the Goodwill Outlet. You want to explain your odd item? Sure. It's a 2014 calendar of weird, strange mustaches. So when you flip it open, it actually shows you like Albert Einstein's mustaches and various different famous people's mustaches. And I really, to be honest, got it because I thought it would be hysterical to put it in my desk and flip through weird mustaches when I'm having a sad day. <laughs> That's incredibly odd. That's incredibly, <laughs> incredibly odd for someone to purchase a 2014 calendar. We did some research, exhaustive research today to discover what is the worth of a calendar from 2014 with <laughs> lots of famous mustaches in it. And we discovered that it is fun, but worthless. <laughs> Absolutely, totally worthless, worth nothing, not a zip, zilt, zero. Uh, uh, Heather, you paid $1 for this worthless item. <laughs> so round one goes to James. It goes to James. He is down negative 20 cents and Heather is down negative $1. Sad face for you. Let's see about round two coming up. Okay, we're into round two and our treasure hunters were to find three different items and they were to put those in the categories to find what is the most profitable of the items. This is what they consider to be their least most profitable item, if you will. And let's see what James picked. What did you pick, James? Well, I found a guitar here for the game Guitar Hero. Uh, I've seen a little bit about it, not much, but I did know that it is in good condition and uh, it looked profitable. Probably not much for the rest of the things that I picked, but still pretty good. Very good, very good. Well, we did some research on it. This is the Guitar Hero Star Power Guitar. There are many Guitar Heroes out there. This is the Star Power Guitar. It is in good working condition. That's very important in reselling. It has to be in good working condition to make the most. It has been tested in good working condition. We expect you to make $35 in sale price of this guitar. After you deduct the shipping and the fees, you're down to $17.75. James, we have discovered that you paid $3 because of the weight of the guitar. Everything at the Goodwill Outlet uh, cost about 99 cents a pound. So this is about $3. So your total profits on this guitar, once it's sold, will be $14.75. Not a bad pick, sir. Not, Not bad a bad all. pick at all. I'm out of the hole. You're out of the hole. This is good. And we're going to find out what Heather picked for round two. Okay, we're in round two for Heather. Let's see, she lost the first round as an experienced picker, so hopefully she can redeem herself for the second round. You have to beat, what is it, 1475, I believe, to be able to beat. Let's see what you have picked. What did, what did you find there at the Goodwill Outlet? Okay, so I found what is called a um, portable refractometer. Um, I didn't know what it was, but I know when you pulled it out and looked through it, it had some weird measuring scope in it. It looked like it came with all the pieces. It's got a little cloth here and some extra tools and accessories. When you pull this out, it's got a little kind of instruction volume. Definitely and, looks like you got the complete set there. Yeah, You've got all yeah. the pieces so to it. That's great. It comes with its own case. The case doesn't have a latch, but I thought just the pieces in general would be interesting. So it looked expensive and unique to me. So that's why I picked it. Do you want to take a wild guess what you think it's used for? Well, you obviously look through it. And so I had thought you put some sort of a sample of liquid on it and then you look at it up close. I don't All right, know. not bad, not bad. It's pretty close, pretty close. This is a portable refractometer, ATC. It is used to test the concentration of sugar, the alcohol content found in sugar. It's used in the sugar, food, and beverages industries. It's used to test the sweetness and to control the concentration of fluid. So not bad. You were very, very close to that. Now, this should sell, even in the used condition that it is, for $25. After shipping and fees, you're at $16.25, and you paid $1 for this item, which means you just won round two. It, you should profit $15, $15.25. I barely 15, 25. You barely that beat James out. for round two, but you have beat him on round two. He's giving me a run for my money. Absolutely. Let's see what James picked for round three. We're ready for round three. James won the first round. Uh, Heather won the second round. We're going to find out who wins round number three. James, what did you find down at the Goodwill Outlet for us? Well, I found these things. Um, they 
look like spades but don't really work so well because you know they wobble <laughs> but I picked them because they have some weird hotel thing on them so I, I'm hoping that's worth something so in your understanding these are something like a spade then? yes Okay, well, we did some research this afternoon to discover what these are. These are vintage metal shoe stretchers. Uh, they are made in Austria. They're actually made very, very well. They were made in the 1960s, the early 1960s. I think it was 1963 is when we discovered. But they wouldn't have been worth a lot, except for this is a very famous hotel. It's the Hotel Imperial in, in Wien, Austria. Uh, this that alone makes them quite valuable because they're some of the only last surviving items from that particular hotel. Um, valuable is a relative term, James. Uh, these should sell for twenty dollars as a set. Twenty dollars after shipping and fees, you should make about ten dollars. You paid fifty cents at the Goodwill outlet for these. That makes your profit nine dollars and 50 cents for these vintage 1960s shoe stretchers. Let's find out what Heather picked in round three. All right, we're ready for round three with Heather here. James has a profit of $9.50, so let's hope that she can beat that $9.50 and see if you can take round number three from James. Okay. So what did you find down at the Goodwill outlet? Well, I found a cassette player, a Memorex cassette player. I've sold Sony ones before. I knew that they were super profitable. So I, as soon, anytime I see a cassette player Walkman, I usually try to gravitate towards them. I checked the battery and made sure that it was no corrosion on the battery, checked and made sure all the buttons worked and all that stuff. And it looked like it was in good working order. And so um, I picked this up because it's technically vintage, although I, I used one, so I guess that makes me vintage. But <laughs> um, so yeah, any of these kind of new um, old tech kind of things. Very good. She did an excellent job. We did the research on this. This is a Memorex voice activated system. It's one of the first voice activated system that Memorex did. It is a cassette recorder, and yes, people still use the cassette recorder. The best profit value actually comes from placing this item on Amazon, and in used, good working condition, you should make $60, should sell for $60, even in used condition, on Amazon. After the fees, you should make $50. You paid 50 cents for this at the Goodwill outlet, so your profits are $49.50. Congratulations. Thank you. You just won round three, <laughs> and that puts you ahead big time of James. Let's see if James can redeem himself in round four and what Heather did in round four. All right, we're ready for round four. It's our final round. Let's see how well James can do. You're a little behind on the rounds here, but you did win round one, so that's mm -hmm. something to be accomplished of, of having negative 20 cents in an item to win round one is not yes. too bad at all, not too bad at all. But you're at the Goodwill Outlet and you found something. You actually found a set. What is this set that you found here? Uh, it's stainless steel utensils. Um, most of them are just, you know, uh, outdoor grilling type things. You've got your, these yes and <laughs> but but what's kind of weird to me is why there's a brush here i don't know who's painting with soy sauce but um these were a set so hopefully they do well very good you actually did a wonderful job in finding this set it's a very heavy set stainless steel very good quality set that we have here this is in research we discovered this is the gin air stainless steel utensil grilling set gin air doesn't make a lot of utensil sets and so that increased the value very heavy set a lot heavier than most sets that are out there even in pre-owned condition being a complete set which we have here the complete set even in pre-owned condition you should sell the set for forty dollars now when you deduct the shipping and fees that brings you to twenty two dollars you paid five dollars for this down at the goodwill outlet that brings your profits to seventeen dollars not a bad haul for what you found down at the goodwill outlet for this complete set of stainless steel grill utensils. Well, let's see what Heather picked in round four. All right, we're in the fourth and final round to find out what Heather picked at the Goodwill outlet. James brought in a pretty good haul, and we're gonna find out if you could match that and beat him. 
He's got one round, the first round that he won. You've round, won the last two rounds. You win this one, you're definitely the winner. And then we'll figure out how much money it all comes up to. What do you find for your fourth round here? Well, I'm usually one to look for something that's light because I don't like anything that's painful to ship. So um, although the, the, um, the utensils that he found were awesome, they're heavy. And so um, in Goodwill Outlet, you wanna look for some stuff that's light. And so I found these actually Ray-Ban glasses they're like definitely a name glasses. brand i don't know if they're reading glasses or regular glasses but they even come with the case um and so i was super excited to find those and i'm ex excited to see if they were like legitimate like expensive end of the ray band club very good very good we did some research today we discovered that these are ray band glasses that is true they are silver from the rb6076 series these should sell even in pre-owned condition for 35 dollars 35 dollars they should sell for after shipping and fees you should be at 24 dollars and 75 cents of profit you pay technically 50 cents is all at the goodwill outlet that's even including the case which brings your profit to 24 dollars and 25 cents you are the winner of round four for sure which i believe that makes you the ultimate winner of rounds we're going to look at how much money she's going to walk away with to, to, to see who's going to win finders keepers losers weeper okay we're going to find out in the first episode of finders keepers losers weepers who'd won it all well james i'm very very proud to say that you made a grand total of all your profits of all the items that you researched and studied out and picked today you made 41 dollars well 41 dollars and five cents so i didn't have a nickel so here's 41 dollars for you today 41 dollars is not bad when you consider the amount of money that was spent down at the goodwill outlet when you're buying things for 99 cents a pound excellent and those three different purchases there well i included the fourth purchase also but it was worthless yeah, I absolutely did. Oh, and, and then we're going to look at what Heather did. Heather did an excellent job. Here is your large stack of cash. She profited $88. $88 and all the things that she purchased. That's why she's the expert, folks. Almost double that. Now, in finders, keepers, losers, weepers, that means the loser has to hand their money right on over to the winner. Go ahead and do that now. Look at the pain expression on the face of losing money. That's how the game works. If you would like to be on an episode of Finders, Keepers, Losers, Weavers, we'd love for you to contact Heather at Hooked on Pickin' and see if you can beat her in the next episode for sure. Heather, would you like to say a few things since you won the first episode? Well, I'm super excited we're gonna make a profit and I'm super proud of James. He is an awesome picker, and I'm definitely taking him on my future picking trips. And don't worry, on all his future picking trips, he does get to keep the money he earned. Very good. Well, hopefully you'll join us back next time on Hooked on Picking. And remember in the end, Jesus wins. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. If you'd like to watch more of my videos, just click on them here. And if you'd like to learn more about the reseller world, subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. Thanks.